Do you know your facts about pole dance? Let's find out. True or false? You must be at least 18 years old to do pole dancing. False, false, right? False. There are pole studios where you need the permission of your parents if you're underage. And there might be some studios where there's a rule that you have to be at least 18 years old. Sure. But yeah, many pole studios have kids classes, right? Yeah. Kids and I'm not sure which age, but younger people. Pole dance originates from strip clubs. True. True, true yeah. Yeah, there are debates about it. That's what I know. But there, there's also different theory. Yeah, like there's a Chinese sport that uses logs to do pole. Yeah. pole. yeah, 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 I've seen that video where this guy jumps on that thing <laughs> and it's like crazy. <laughs> yeah, but does pole dance originate from there? Probably from strip clubs. <laughs> the thinner the diameter of the pole, the easier it is. Ah. Uh, I think for most people it's true, especially for people with small hands, it is easier to hold the pole if it's thinner, but a thinner pole makes it more difficult for knee hangs and more painful. In the past, the classic diameter was 50 millimeters. What do you think? Mm, true? Yeah, yeah, it is, it's, I, it's not my time. <laughs> I started on 45, but I heard, I heard that most poles at the beginning of pole dancing were 50 millimeters and i don't know if it has something to do with the strip clubs i'm not sure mm. the most popular pole finish is chrome yeah sure that's what i uh but it probably depends because in australia it's it's brass because it's so humid and i think most mm. studios there have brass but globally, like, there are no statistics about it, but like globally competitions and studios, I think, yeah, I think the majority is chrome. Yeah, the competition standard is chrome, right? Yeah, maybe not in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Every pole can spin. False. False, yeah, there are static only poles. There are poles that have both static and spinning and there's only static. Is there also only spinning? One then cannot be static? Probably. <laughs> None of the professional ones. <laughs> the, the street signs. <laughs> the ones on the street. Oh no, no, they can only be static. Okay. Yeah, please. street signs that only spin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Aisha is easy on static. Uh, you can do it. Can you do it, Aisha? Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's easier on static. It is easy on static, yeah. Inverts are easy on spinning. False. No, no. <laughs> like the, all of those trend moves like Aisha and inverts and shoulder mounts, that, that they are more difficult on spinning. So spinning makes it more difficult. What is easy on spinning? Hmm. Holding pretty shapes? Yeah, probably. Transitions, making transitions look fluent so much easier. It just it just looks fluent by itself without you doing much. It spins on the floor, right? Spins on the floor? Yeah, depends on, depends on how spin. much you hold, yeah. yeah. Some of these grips need some extra strength and practice. To make them rock solid, I've prepared a 10 minute conditioning video that you can include in your regular pole practice. It's for free and you can get it on thepoledancer.com slash conditioning. This workout is designed to improve your grip, your upper body strength and your technique on the pole. I've selected my most favorite exercises for my classes that cover the most common grips. It's easy to follow along. Just press play and follow the variation that suits your current level. I've included different progressions for different levels so that you have a goal to work towards. This is the poledancer.com slash conditioning. Okay, you can pole on any street sign. <laughs> have you done it? Yeah, recently, yeah. and I think it's false because there are street signs that are super shaky. Oh, <laughs> depending <laughs> on how sturdy it is yeah. to the ground. Yep. Yeah, that is, that's one, of course, depends on how thick it is. What did you do on that street sign? I could only hold like a basic sit because it was so... Ah, you, yeah, when you sit on it, yeah. Yeah, sit, cross knee release, I've done cross knee release. Yeah. It's actually harder than I thought. 
it would be. It's so thick. It's thicker yeah. than your average mm. pole, right? And holding on to it, so ugh, yeah, it's difficult. It's it's probably the material is not ideal to for the skin to yeah. stick. Okay. Yeah, I've tried some and it's, they were rusty <gasps> and <laughs> you can see that on my skin in the next days. It was not, not a pleasant sensation. Skin bruises are called <laughs> pole greets. <laughs> pole greets? Wait. Pole, pole kisses, right? Yeah, I so. <laughs> okay. Pole greets. Coffee can help you avoid bruising. Not that I know of. Me neither. But. I know, I don't think so. I can help. Hmm, not sure. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> if you feel dizzy after a spinning combo, jump in one place. I've seen you do that. Yes, that is, that is my number one technique. Uh, <laughs> my favorite way to, to get rid of dizziness quickly. And of, of course, spotting. Spotting and jumping in one place, I feel is the best. But only spotting, I feel like, could take longer than if you jump in one place. Because that's because it equ equilibrates the vibrations in the inner ear, which make you feel dizzy. Injury number one in pole dance is a broken nose. <laughs> Do you know, have you heard of someone breaking nose? Never. Nose? Never. Never in pole dance, no. Uh-huh. There is a trick called the, the nose breaker. Do you know this one? No. It's a, it's a drop. So when you're upside down in crucifix <laughs> and you slide yourself in the last moment, that's very Chinese thing, Chinese pole in circles. So you, you drop, you slide yourself and then at the last moment you stop. It's called the nose breaker. I can imagine why. So maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> it, it, of course it's possible. You can break your nose just walking on the street, right? But it, that's, that's not injury number one. What would be injury number one in pole dance? Shoulders. Shoulders. Shoulders, shoulder rotate the cuff, I think is number yeah. one. The more grip aid on your hands, the better the grip. False. False, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you done this? Have you had too much grip aid? Of course. All right, and it makes you sleep again. Yeah, the hands get sweaty from all, <laughs> from all the grip and you slip and slide all the time. So. Yeah, so don't put on too much grip. Gotta don't wash your use, hands. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Wash your hands and play again. Can Poe when pregnant? Ask your doctor. <laughs> No, like we've all seen videos of pregnant pole dancers. Generally, you can pole as long as you feel good, as long as you feel fine. I, however, have never been pregnant, so I cannot speak from my own experience. In the studio, it's allowed to come to pole classes when you're pregnant. You have to be careful, of course, not pressing your belly too much into the pole and with inverts, it's a little bit tricky because mm -hmm. the muscle, they, they stop working. And I can imagine that at some point the doctor would say that inverts are not a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So it's best to ask your doctor first. Know your body, listen <laughs> to your body. But I've seen, I've seen very like really, really pregnant <laughs> yeah. women. They just, just spinning a little around, like, of course, no tricks, upside down tricks. For pole dance, you need previous dance experience. No, false. <laughs> pole dancing is a dance style. What do you think? False. What is it then? <laughs> I think the pole is a tool, right? To dance different dance styles with. Yeah. I yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, it's an apparatus and you can use it for different styles. Like within pole dance, there are so many styles that you cannot it's hard to say pole dance is just this style because pole dance is so versatile. Yeah, it's whatever you make out of it. The average age of pole dancers is between 15 and 25 years old. Oh, do we have any statistics here? Can we check quickly on the internet? Is there? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I need a joker. Yeah, like my students are older than 25. Yeah. My students are between 25 and 40, some, some older. 
But probably depends on the country, on the studio. Yeah, there are many kids that do it. And also many people start when they're like 20. I started when I was 20. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's young. <laughs> <laughs> I started when I was 28. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I started when I was 28. <laughs> 20s, yeah. <laughs> Maybe in Russia, the poor kids in Russia, they probably... Eight. <laughs> Five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And last question. You need to use a drill to install a pole. False. False. You did use a drill to install this one, right? Yes, 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 yes. That's a custom-made pole for the height of my ceiling. It's one piece. Because I wanted to have the best pin. This one you have to drill. Because it's one piece. But you definitely don't have to for every pole. Yeah. Most poles are pressure mounted, right? Yeah. All home poles are pressure mounted. Or you have stage poles, right? Yes. And if it's too high, you also have to drill it. Everything above four meters for safety reasons. (laughs) Do you disagree with anything or have a different experience? Let us know in the comments.